how to use GitHub branch the correct way without ever messing up your GitHub repository again, even if you have limited to zero experience with using Git or GitHub. Hi there, my name is Michal Akma, and it's my mission to lead you towards becoming a successful and confident software developer. So the reason why I clicked on this video is because you're currently facing an issue with your GitHub repository with using the branch the correct way. So let's say you just create some changes and you push them into your GitHub repository. But after five minutes, you find out that the code you just pushed is wrong. It doesn't work. Well, rip, because you already pushed it towards your master branch and now you no longer can change it properly. I made that mistake many times and it was so, 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 so frustrating. It was literally the most annoying thing ever. It even cost me to recreate my entire GitHub repository and then like flip everything upside down. And at the end, I was like, screw this project. I don't want to do it anymore. Well, there you have it. And probably you are having the same feeling right now, but no worries because at the end of this video, you will no longer feel that way. You will be able to create the, the GitHub branches in the way you want it to, and you will never suffer again. Now, what I only need you to do is just watch this video till the end. Don't skip anything. But without further ado, let's get started. So the way we are going to be solving that issue is by something called a feature branch. So by default, when you create a GitHub repository, you get a default branch with it, which is called the master branch. And that's also going to be the standard branch that you'll be committing and pushing your changes towards. The issue is, since it's the main branch, everything that you commit and push in that is going to be inside of your main con project. So let's say, like I said in the introduction of the video, imagine you make a mistake and you already pushed it, you are screwed because you have to do it like a really difficult way. You can like delete the files like manually. It's freaking, freaking annoying. And that's why feature branches are so good. So what is a feature branch then? Well, like the name suggests, a feature branch is a specific branch that you create to create or develop a specific feature of your in your application. So in this example that I'm going to show you here, we create a simple array which contains a couple of names from people and then we iterate through that array and we print it out inside the terminal. That's the only thing we're going to be doing. But before we do that, we create our own feature branch, which is going to be named array of names. And we're going to check out, which I will show you as well. And then we're going to write that code. And then we push, push our code that's related to that branch, to that feature that we created. We're going to push it to our new branch. And then we go to GitHub and then we can review it and then we can uh, create a pull request and then we can merge it with our master branch if everything is working correctly. So let's get started. So first of all, as you can see, I already have some stuff here. And if I look down here to all to the right, you see get branch master. So this means I'm currently checked out inside of the master branch because that's the only branch that we currently have inside of this project. So now before we do anything else, let's create a new branch. So let's click on remote here and then let's click create, click on new branch from origin slash master. And let's name this branch future uh, feature, excuse me, slash uh, array of people names. And this branch is also going to be containing the way the iteration code. So don't really worry. And before you're thinking, oh, is it only for small little changes? No. Let's say you need to create a whole API or something else. You can just create for that specific feature a, spe a new branch. So it doesn't really matter the size, just that specific feature that you're adding. So let's say you're adding a class, you're developing an entire class of a person, then that class is then, then you're going to be writing that code inside of a feature branch called a person class, for example. So now let's actually click on create here and make sure checkout branch is automatically selected here. So you automatically check out to the new branch. Now let's click on create branch. And now when we go back down here, we see that our local branches now say feature slash array of people names. And now you're probably wondering, oh, why does remote branches doesn't list it. Well, that's because by default branch that you create locally here do not get pushed towards the GitHub repository. So let's actually fix that real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this branch here and just click on push. And now yeah, yeah, make sure you select it push. 
pushed feature, blah, 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 blah. Yes, and now if we looked here again, you can see the remote branches also contain our new branch now. And if we would look inside of the GitHub repository itself, our branch would now be available. But we will be looking at after we wrote our code. So now let's actually start writing our code. So create array of names. So a simple string array called names. If I can type freaking figure, big ass fingers. Oh, <laughs> uh, what should be the name? Jack, Jack, James and Mike, because why not? And then right here, it's going to be very simple. We just going to create a simple for each that's going through those names and we will just print it out inside of the console. So blah, 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 name, done. As you see, it's very easy, it's very straightforward. Now what we want to do is, now we go to the commit tab here on the left, we go to changes and we see that we create a change in the program.cs file. Let's actually right click and click on show differences. And as you can see, the difference is that we just wrote the entire code. So now let's actually commit the changes that we just created to our repository. So make sure you select all the changes here and uh, created the array of names and the iteration. Iter Rage, iteration. <laughs> I suck at typing. Jesus. Don't bully me, okay? I swear, don't bully me. I'm human too. <laughs> so now, instead of just committing, we just we are just going to commit and push it. Because why not? So commit and push. Blah, 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 blah. Push. Pushing. Pushed one commit to origin dot, 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 dot. So. Now, right now, if we were to go to git below here and we check our commits, created the array of names and the iteration. So it's there. And if we actually head over to the left here on the local, you see feature here as well, but also in the side, inside of the remote, if we were to select the feature, it also says the same thing because we just did it. It's now available in the remote branch as well. Now to actually see everything in action inside of the GitHub repository itself, let's head over to the GitHub repository page. So here we are inside of the GitHub repository page of this project. And as you can see, we have a nice message here, which says feature slash array of people names had recent pushes less than a minute ago. But before I, we click on this, let's click on master here on the master tab, because we are currently still looking inside of the master branch. But if we click on it, you see it's not here, view all branches. And that's because we haven't created a pull request yet. So what you do here is you click on create new pull request, new pull request. And as you can see base master because this is going to merge with each other. So we can create a comment if you want to, but we just gonna keep the stand here. Create the array of names and iteration. Now let's click on create pull request. It's going to check for ability, uh, simple, because we haven't added any continuous integration, so don't worry, worry about it. And yeah, good, this branch has no conflict with the base branch. Merging can be performed automatically. But before we do this, as you can see, if we would go back to the code here, and we select master make sure it's selected you see here because even if we push the changes our program.cs is still not modified all our changes are currently on hold inside of the features slash array of people names branch which is our feature branch and it also says here this com this branch is one commit ahead because we have committed but we haven't merged yet with the master branch so let's click on one commit ahead here. And now we get here and then we can see the changes. But let's click on view pull request because as you just saw, we just created a new pull request. And now we are just making sure that everything worked and well, this is going to work, we know. But in your case, you always want to test your code if it's working or not. So 
in case you already pushed it and committed it and it doesn't work, you can still change it. And when you actually know that it works, you test it and everything has, has come out correctly, then you can merge it with the main branch that you are using in your GitHub repository. So now, because we know that everything is working, let's just click on merge pull request. Now we can add a peep, we can add a message here, merge pull request, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, conform merge. Pull request successfully merged and closed. And now by default, it does not delete this branch that we just created. We can actually enable it. I will show you how to do that as well. But for now, let's just click on delete branch manually. So and now we can restore it. But if we would refresh the page, it's gone. We can no longer, oh, we can actually restore it. But if I would go over to the code here, it, it refresh it. As you can see, the feature branch is gone. It's deleted. But if we go now to the GitHub feature branch, and by the way, we are we are back in the master branch here, and we go to the program.cs, you can see our code is now in here. We have successfully merged our changes within the master branch. But now when you saw that we actually had to manually delete our feature branch, it can be very annoying, especially if you're creating many branches, you can actually automate this when a branch, when a feature branch get merged, it will automatically get deleted as well. And to actually enable it, this, go to the settings of your repository, make sure general is selected here, then scroll down and down and down. And then go to pull requests here. And then on right here, here it is, I, I couldn't see it, automatically delete head branches. So just select this and by default it's now enabled. And now when you merge a future branch with your master branch, the feature branch will automatically be deleted. So now let's actually head back to our code and let's actually the change that happened over there. So now we're back here. And as you can see now under the remote branches here, the feature branch no longer available only inside of the local branches. But we, before we can actually do anything, we have, we have this blue arrow next to the master branch here. So let's actually click on it and click on update because we have updated some stuff in the GitHub repository itself. So we have to update it locally as well. So let's go over to the local branches here and click on master and then click on check out because now we want to go back to our master branch. And now that is done. Yeah, we get this nice message here. Now we, we head back over there again. And under the local branches, the feature slash array of people names is still there. And you can keep it there if you want to for history purposes. But you could also just delete it because if you're really not going to use it anymore and you know it, just delete it. It makes it cleaner and less clutter. So just click on it and then click on delete. And now deleted branch. So now the branch is also locally no longer available. So hopefully the challenge that you are facing is now solved. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, comment any questions down below. And I want you to subscribe to the channel if you want to become successful. So hit that subscribe button right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios.